Hi, my name is Eric Odie. Welcome to the City of Edmonds Virtual Summer Concert Series presented by the Edmonds Arts Commission. And, uh, and we, we need to send a special shout out, thank you to the Hazel Miller Foundation um, for this event. And, uh, and we really would have loved to have been at the uh, Hazel Miller Plaza and join ourselves together there. But we are gonna make do um, virtually instead. And so this goes out to the city of Edmonds and, and bring the kids around because this is a kids concert. You have a certain style like no one else around. It's in the way you smile. It's in the way you frown. Just as sure as one and one makes two. I like the way you do the things you do. I like the way you do the things you do. It's when you play a game. I like the way you laugh. When you write your name. I like your autograph. When you comb your hair or tie your shoe. I like the way you do the things you do. I like the way you do the things you do. Every day in every way in fall, winter, summer, or spring. I like the way you play, the way you run, the things you say, the fun you bring. I like it when you walk. I like it when you're near. I like the way you talk or whisper in my ear. I like the secrets that you share, it's true. I like the way you do the things you do. I like the way you do the things you do. Every day in every way in fall, winter, summer, or spring. I like the way you play, the way you run, the things you say, the fun you bring. I like the way you sing. Squeep a deep bop, squeep a dee deep a doo bow. You have a certain style like no one else around. It's in the way you smile, it's in the way you frown. Just as sure as one and one makes two. I like the way you do the things you do. I like the way you do the things you do. Scat doo bop, squeep ba dee ba dee bow. Shoo ba dee ba dee dwee bow. Scoo ba dee dee. All right, I brought a whole bunch of stuff with me. I brought some hats, I brought some puppets, I brought some books, and, uh, and, I, and I brought this. I brought a pizza. Well, actually I brought a pizza hat because I thought we should do a pizza song. Why? Because why not? So right now, you are all pizza drivers. And as pizza drivers, there are some things you need to know. First off, as a pizza driver, you have to get into your, your pizza van, seatbelt on, of course. Get the seatbelt on and grab the wheel. Now, while you're driving, you can, you can wave to people while you're driving. They're a little jealous that you're a pizza driver, and they're not. So you can make them feel a little better. And, uh, and one thing you need to know about being a pizza driver is that you have to be quick, right? Um, you know, you, nobody wants cold pizza. Well, maybe for breakfast, but usually people want hot pizza. So we have to get quick about this while obeying all the speed limits and posted signs. But we have to be quick. And we're going to go into the city to deliver a whole bunch of pizzas. All right. Oh, did you grab the wheel? Grab the wheel. Here we go. Well, I'm a pizza man in a pizza van. I'm making these deliveries as fast as I can Cause the pizza's got to be good and hot If I want the people happy with the pizza they bought Now I'm deep in the city At a big tall tower With a veggie pizza topped with cheese and peas and cauliflower I reach the elevator There's a sign on the door The sign says Sorry, out of service The elevator's not working so what do we have to do? We have to use the stairs to get us to the 13th floor. You ready? All right, now this is an echo. You count back, here we go. One, two, three, four. Think my feet are getting sore. Five, six, seven, eight. Hope it isn't getting late. Thirteen. 
13th floor. Knock on the door. Knock again. Oh, pizza man! Your order, ma'am. Is it all right? Out of sight? Hot pizza tonight, yes! Okay, we got there in time, but we do have another pizza to deliver. Back in your pizza van, grab the wheel. I'm a pizza man in a pizza van. I'm making these deliveries as fast as I can. Cause the pizza's got to be good and hot. If I want the people happy with the pizza they bought. Now I'm back in the city at a big tall tower with a pepperoni pizza topped with cheese and cauliflower. I reach the elevator. There's a sign on the door. The sign says, sorry, out of service. Another elevator down. What do we do? Yeah, take the stairs to get us to the, the 17th floor. Ready? All right, back on your feet. Here we go. You count back. One, two, three, four. Think my feet are getting sore. Five, six, seven, eight. Hope it isn't getting late. Nine, ten. Oh, I just might make it, but I'm not sure when. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeenth floor. Knock on the door. Try again. Oh, pizza man! Your order, sir. Is it all right? Out of sight? Hot pizza tonight! Yes! Okay, we are two for two, but we do have one more stack of pizzas to deliver. It's a big, tall stack back in your pizza van. Here we go. Now I'm a pizza man in a pizza van. I'm making these deliveries as fast as I can Cause a pizza's got to be good and hot If I want the people happy with the pizza they bought Now I'm back in the city at a big high rise With a stack of seven celery and pumpkin pizza pies I reach the elevator, there's a sign on the door The sign says, sorry, out of service Ugh. What do we do? We take the stairs to get us to the 20th, 20th, 20th floor. Ready? All right, last time, make it good. You count back. One, two, three, four. Think my feet are getting sore. Five, six, seven, eight. Whew. Hope it isn't getting late. Hold on, I have to catch my breath. Okay, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th floor. Knock on the door. Uh, oh, are we late? Try again. Oh, I hope we're not late. Oh, uh, uh, pizza man. Uh, these are all for you. Are they all right? Out of sight? Yes! Hot pizza tonight! Beautifully done! Well done! All right. Well, let's see. I'm going to take off. We should do one more bit of traveling, though. Let's see. Okay, we're going to do, while I tie my shoe, because I untied it while I was doing that last song, we're going to do a dump truck song. And I'll tell you why. We're doing a dump truck song because I was doing a concert with my friend Brian Vogan and my friend Nancy Stewart. And Brian Vogan and his band, they were doing a concert and in the middle of their concert, they did a song about a dump truck. It's a really good song about a dump truck. And then later, Nancy Stewart, she was doing a concert and, and she did a song about a dump truck. And I realized something, Brian had a song about a dump truck, Nancy had a song about a dump truck, 
I didn't have a song about a dump truck. That made me sad. So this is a song called Everybody's Got a Dump Truck Song But Me. Kind of a self-referential song. Everybody's got a dump truck song but me. I said everybody's got a dump truck song but me. Now I was feeling kind of down like I didn't belong. Mama kissed me on the head and she said, what's wrong? I said, everybody's got a dump truck song but me. It's a sad song. Well, my buddy Brian's got a song about a big dump truck. And my good friend Nancy's got a song about a big dump truck. So I was feeling kind of down, kind of out of luck. I tried to write a new song, but the words got stuck. And now everybody's got a dump truck song but me. You see, if, if I had a song about a dump truck, it would be legendary. It'd be a song so tough about a truck, so rough and all the good stuff it could carry. Now I could sing about a train or a boat or a plane or the wheels on the bus you see. But everybody's got a dump truck song but me. All right, here we go. I said everybody's got a dump truck song but me. Sad song. Everybody's got a dump truck song but me. Oh, I was feeling kind of down like I didn't belong. Mama kissed me on the head and she said, What's wrong? I said, Everybody's got a dump truck song but me. Oh, yeah, I said, Everybody's got a dump truck song but me. Oh, sad, sad. Everybody's got a dump truck song, but me. Oh, oh. sad song. Okay. <laughs> Tell you what, all oh, this shift gears. This is shift gears. Ah, because it was a dump truck song. Got it. Okay. All right. This is a song about about gardens and growing things. There's more to a seed than you can see. It's a package of pure possibility. In time we'll find there is so much new. Just like a seed, there is more in you. Now, now this is an echo song. So I want you to sing right back to me. Here we go. Season to season, the sun and the rain. Who knows the reason? Who can explain? The seeds of the garden are more than they seem. Filled with a promise as big as a dream. Now there's more to a seed than you can see. It's a package of pure possibility. In time we'll find there is so much new. Just like a seed, there is more in you. Okay, another echo part. I'll go first. Spring follows winter and welcomes the sun. In the garden, life has begun. You have the power, more than you know. Just like a flower, to blossom and grow. There's more to a seed than you can see. It's a package of pure possibility. In time we'll find there is so much new Just like a seed, there is more in you All right. 
hey, I'm going to put down the guitar for a minute, and I want to share maybe a poem or two with you today. I brought a couple of books, and I brought this book with me. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a book of poems about the wetlands, and it's called Otters, Snails, and Tadpole Tales, Poems from the Wetlands. Down here it says by Eric Ody. That's me, so that makes me the author, sometimes called the poet, right, because these are poems, illustrated by Ruth Harper. So these amazing illustrations were done by Ruth Harper, and it was, it was published by Kane Miller Books. And we have poems in here. Well, here's a poem about a turtle, a poem about salmon, or here's a poem about a, a raccoon. So the poems in here are about animals and plants that you might find in wet, marshy places. Here's a poem about a river otter. I'm going to share a poem with you, but I'm not going to tell you what the poem is about. You have to guess. You have to guess. But if you listen for clues, I think you'll figure it out. And I brought with me, this is The Dragonfly of Silence. And here's how this works. If I put this up against my mouth, it just means I'm not going to say that word because I don't want you to know what the poem is about. I want you to guess. So listen for clues. Here we go. Speak with the, if he'll dare spare the time. Ask about his home of steeply heaped limbs, a home that first seems built with the carelessness of laundry piled upon an unmade bed. Speak with the, he will tell you instead of how each bite felt against his teeth and tongue. He'll talk of the taste, the smell, the delicious muddy thud of each tree as it finally fell. Did you guess? It was the, do you know? It was the beaver. Did you guess the beaver? It was. It was the beaver. Let's do one more. One more. And I don't even have to use the... Uh, the dragonfly of silence for this one because, well, you'll find out why. But see if you can guess this, this last one. Here we go. From here, she first appears as a small black pool poured near the trail's edge until one step too heavy sends her slipping unheard between the slender fingers of sedges and reeds. So easily she turns from serpent to stream, coil to oil. Did you get that one? What would it look like? Maybe a little black pool. Maybe got too close to it. All of a sudden it turned into a little stream, disappeared into the grasses. Did you figure it? Yeah, it was a, it was a garter snake. Did you guess a garter snake? Or a snake of some sort? It was, it was a garter snake. All right. Well, since we were doing some poems about marshy different kinds of places, let's do one song for a frog. Now, this is a song called At the Lily Patio. At the Lily Patio. Now, it's not a song about a lily pad. You know what a lily pad is? A lily pad is like that, that green leaf that is floating there on the surface of the water. And, uh, and, and if you can see that through the water, you see that there is a stem that goes from that leaf. It goes all the way through the water and there are roots that dig into the mud. And so it's a real plant with real roots and everything, but we just see that leaf floating on top and, and a patio. Well, a patio is maybe, maybe you or maybe a friend has like a big slab of concrete into the backyard and you can hang out there and you can have a barbecue and you can sing songs and drink lemonade and that is a patio. But this is not a song about a lily pad. It's not a song about a patio. This is a song about a lily patio. And your job is to sing at the lily patio, at the lily patio but not yet. I'll let you know when. Okay. Where does a frog want to be at the end of the day? Put your green feet up, chase the big bad blues away. Set aside your labors, call your friends and neighbors from around the bog. There's a cool paced place, life is easier than leaping off a log. 
and that's pretty easy for a frog. So come on, let's go to the lily patio. We'll be taking it slow at the lily patio. Turn the lightning bugs low at the lily patio. Everybody you know is at the lily patio. All right. You know what the song also needs? It, it could use some frogs. I need your best frog sounds. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Just like that. Here we go. When a romp in the swamp has been taking its toll, I know a place cool, groove, and meant for soothing your amphibian soul. Flea and beetle lemonade, moth and mosquito pies. Day is done, time is sure fun when you're having flies. Here we go. So come on, let's go to the lily patio. We'll be taking it slow at the lily patio. Turn the lightning bugs low at the lily patio. Everybody you know is at the lily patio. All right, bring back the frogs. Ribbit, ribbit. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Life upon the pond is jumping. All that racket gets you grumping. Time to find a simple sort of scene. Night is waiting just ahead. Tadpoles have been tucked in bed. We'll take it sweet and easy, being green. So come on, let's go to the lily patio. We'll be taking it slow at the lily patio. Turn the lightning bugs low at the lily patio. Everybody you know is at the lily patio. Turn on the radio at the lily patio. That's where you want to go at the lily patio. Turn the lightning bugs low at the lily patio. Everybody you know is at the lily patio. Everybody you know is at the lily patio. Everybody you know is at the lily patio. All right, last time. Bring back my frogs. Here we go. Ribbit. 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 Yeah, just like that. Ribbit. Ribbit. How about another animal song? Okay, all right. This is a song about gophers, gophers. And here is what I know about gophers. Gophers love their vegetables. Every bit as much as you love your vegetables, gophers love their vegetables. And they hang out in their little gopher holes, like dig holes. And, uh, and sometimes they pop up out of their gopher holes, they look around, maybe they wave, they probably wave. And then they go back down into their gopher holes so here's the deal. During this song, every time I say the word gopher, if we're sitting down and I say the word gopher, we have to stand up. But if we are standing up and I say the word gopher, we have to sit back down again. And I guess we'll find out by the end of the song if we're left standing or sitting. We'll, we'll start by, by sitting. All right, here we go. I've got a rake, a lovely rake. I've got a pair of gloves. I've got some seeds, for goodness sake, of all the vegetables I love. I've got a spot in my backyard. This garden work is not that hard. In no time, we'll have chives and chard and beans. Like something out of Better Homes and Gardens magazines. But Gophers in the garden, gophers underground, gophers where the carrots and the cabbages are found, gophers know where grow the rows of radishes and peas, nothing grows where gophers go for gopher groceries, nothing grows where gophers go for gopher groceries. Nice. Are we up or down? Are we down? We're down. I love the way tomatoes sway upon a morning breeze. I love a sunny summer's day with garden dirt upon my knees. Oh, you have to brush the dirt off your knees. Brush the dirt off. I love a snappy salad lunch with beets and Brussels sprouts at crunch. I'll have a few, I'll have a bunch. And then I'll run back to my garden where my vegetables had been. But 
not. Gophers in the garden, gophers underground. Gophers where the carrots and the cabbages are found. Gophers nowhere grow the rows of radishes and peas. Nothing grows where gophers go for gopher groceries. Nothing grows where gophers go for gopher groceries. Beautiful! Hang in there. If you should find you have in mind to build a garden grand, when it is time to dig and dine, there's someone who might lend a hand. This critter might decide to graze upon the veggies that you raise. He'll rob you blind, then sing your praise. It's true. Yes, someone digs a veggie garden just as much as you. Gophers in the garden, gophers underground. Gophers where the carrots and the cabbages are bound. Gophers nowhere grow the rows of radishes and peas. Nothing grows where gophers go for gopher groceries. Nothing grows where gophers go for gopher groceries. Nothing grows where gophers. Gopher. Well done. Well done. Give yourselves another big hand. How about, okay, one more, one more critter song. And I'm going to tell you a, a, a story, I'm, a little truth. I'm not, I'm not proud of this, but here's the truth. The truth is, there was a time when I didn't like possums. I know that's not a very nice thing to say, but it's true. There was a time when I didn't like possums. I thought they were kind of scary looking. They have these very sharp teeth. Well, not this one because it's a puppet, but in real life they have very, very sharp teeth and they come out at night and they've got this, this big long rat-like tail on them and, and I thought they looked kind of funny and so I didn't like possums. And then, or sometimes called the opossum, right? And then I decided I was going to write a song about possums. Now that, of course, meant that I had to learn stuff. And I learned some things. I learned, for instance, that the, uh, the, the possum has 50 teeth. Can you beat that? 50 teeth, that's a lot of teeth. And, uh, and the mama possum has a pouch, like a kangaroo has a pouch. And, and the, the baby possums, they get to grow up inside of that pouch where they're nice and warm and protected. And then when they get big enough, they can crawl up on mom's back and then she takes them on a ride. That's pretty cool. And, uh, and I learned that they eat ticks. Yeah, they eat like thousands of ticks. And that's, that's cool because the ticks are a little dangerous and, and, uh, and they're, a, they're a bug and they can spread disease. And so nobody wants ticks around. And, and uh, oh, and, and I, I learned about Plain possum. Now, you know about plain possum? Plain possum is when that the possum is out, it's on a stroll, do 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 and something big and scary comes around, like maybe a big dog. Can you bark like a big dog? Right? Oh, oh, oh. And, and the possum gets so scared, she goes, blap, and she falls over, and her tongue hangs out, blah, and and she looks like she's dead. And she's not dead. She just looks like she's dead. And, and she doesn't even mean to do this. Her body just takes over. I thought that was the coolest part. Her body just takes over. And, and then when her body thinks that it's safe again, she wakes up and she goes back on her way. And, uh, and that's called plain possum. It's also called thanatosis. That's the fancy word for it, thanatosis. So remember I told you that there was a time when I didn't like possums? Yeah, well, after I took the time to learn about possums, now I think possums are really, really, really cool. But I had to learn about them first. I think that happens a lot, right? I mean, some things seem kind of scary until we figure them out, until we get to learn about them. All right, this song does have a, a, an echo. When I count one, two, you have to count one back. One, two, right back at me. So if I go one, two, you go one, two, right? We'll go three, four. All right, here we go. Who's that fuzzy critter hanging out in a tree? Possibly the possum with 50 fine teeth smiling down at me. Possibly the possum who's got a pink nose and pink paws too. Who's got herself a pouch like a crazy kangaroo who lived back with the dinosaurs. I've heard that it's true. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four, three, four. Possums at the back door. Who's got her little babies 
clinging to her back. Possibly the possum who's busy eating bugs and slugs and berries for a snack. Possibly the possum who's got herself thumbs on her two hind feet. She's strutting slow and silently, shuffling down the street with a, a long and clever tail. I think that's pretty neat. One, two, three, four. Possums at the back door. When you pass them by a possum, you're likely to stop to pause some. You'll think about that pointy snout, those mighty jaws and claws some. Tell your ma and pa some. Soon you'll hear them shout it. The possum is awesome. No doubt about it. But exploring in the night Possibly the possum Who lies so still and silent She doesn't have to fight Possibly the possum That's right, it's possibly the possum It's possibly It might be It could be It indubitably Is the possum Oh, beautiful. Well, let's see. So we did, we did a song about a, a gopher. We did a song about a, uh, about a possum. We did a songs about, uh, with frogs. And, uh, oh, okay. I, I wanted to write a song about a raccoon. A raccoon. And I thought it'd be fun to write a song that would explain why the raccoon has a mask do you remember that? That a raccoon has, has a mask on and it has rings around the tail. And I thought that would be kind of a fun kind of a song to sing. Maybe the kind of song that, that Shel Silverstein would write. Maybe the kind of song that the Water Boys would, would sing. And, and, and I came up with something like this. <laughs> of gold, diamonds shining so bright, ask him and he'd tell you, wouldn't it be grand? Chains of gold around my neck and shiny rings upon my hand. In the wood, a castle stood where lived a wizard's daughter, a pleasant child, a gentle smile, hair that flowed like water, clothed in robes of satin, fancy as a queen. On each finger rings of gold, the finest ever seen. Hey, hey, diddle, diddle, dee. Hey, diddle, die, diddle, dee. Diddle, diddle, I die, dee. Hey, hey, diddle, diddle, dee. Hey, diddle, die, diddle, dee. Diddle, diddle, I die, dee. Now, late one night, the moon was bright, all the world was sleeping. Raccoon thought the time was right, so he set off creeping through a castle window, silent as a dream. And for the task he wore a mask in case he should be seen. Very soon he found the room where lay the daughter snoring. In the glimmer of the moon, the rings he was adoring. He snatched them from the table, sure he couldn't fail. But they were too big for his fingers, so he slid them on his tail. Hey, hey, diddle, diddle, dee. Hey, diddle, die, diddle, dee. Diddle, diddle, I die, dee. Now, a raccoon may have slipped away, but nighttime took his toll now. He fell asleep, and there he lay, still with the rings he stole now. Morning, when the daughter woke to find the ring she wore. Looked around and there she found the raccoon on the floor. Huh. The wizard raced into that place, his daughter shocked and pale there. He saw the mask on raccoon's face, the rings along his tail there. With an incantation that shimmered like the sun, he cast a spell so all could tell the things raccoon had done. Hey, hey, diddle, diddle, dee. hey, diddle, die, diddle, dee. diddle, diddle, I die. Dee. Appears be certain 
what you'll find there. No, the mask the raccoon wears is there as a reminder. Once he felt so clever as he crept along the trail. And now he wears a mask forever, like the rings along his tail. Hey, hey, diddle, diddle, dee. Hey, diddle, die, diddle, dee. Diddle, diddle, I die, diddle. Hey, hey, diddle, diddle, dee. Hey, diddle, die, diddle, dee. story yeah, yeah that was great i thought so yeah, too. thanks eric yeah you too nelson hey, nice. hey hey can you put me down now put you down yeah thanks oh oh yeah sorry mm, sorry oh I'll, I'll put you down um over here i'll put you down over sorry oh we should do another animal song okay what else did i bring oh i got this one all right what did i bring can you tell yes it is a skunk this is a song about my favorite skunk. Her name is Jessie. Her name is Jessie. And, and the song goes like this. The night was cold. The sky was dark and drizzly. When Jessie skunk took shelter in a cave. But all at once she woke a mama grizzly. This tale is turning desperate and grave. Oh, what a treat, the grizzly said. I'll eat you, then go back to bed. Poor Jesse Skunk is no one near to save the day. But Jesse Skunk is quite all right. She'll walk away without a fight. When times are tough, I think she might be smarter than you thunk. So never fear and give a cheer. Hooray, hooray for Jesse Skunk. Jesse Skunk stepped in an elevator to travel to the 32nd floor. But right behind her came an alligator who chuckled at the closing of the door. The gator said, I have a hunch. I found a tiny tasty lunch. Now no one dares to use that elevator anymore. But Jessie Skunk is quite all right. She'll walk away without a fight. When times are tough, I think she might be smarter than you thunk. So never fear and give a cheer. Hooray! Hooray for Jessie Skunk. Jessie took a cruise ship to Aruba. She lounged about the beach till after dark. But one day as she taught herself to scuba, she came upon a hungry tiger shark. The shark said, you're not fish or eel, but still you'll make a tasty meal. I'll skip the soup and salad and be dining a la carte. But Jessie Skunk is quite all right. She'll walk away without a fight. When times are tough, I think she might be smarter than you thunk. So never fear and give a cheer. Hooray! Never fear and give a cheer. Hooray! Who break for Jesse Skunk? All right. Oh, okay, wait a minute. We've been doing some nighttime animals. We should do one more nighttime song. Let's see if you recognize what this one is. Can you tell? Yeah, a bat. I brought a bat with me. Not a real bat, but it looks pretty good, doesn't it? You ever seen a bat fly? They're amazing. They're like over here and over there. You know what they're chasing after, right? They're after bugs. They're after bugs, also mosquitoes especially. They're really good at catching mosquitoes. Some bats eat fruit, but around here we just have um, bats that eat bugs. And then of course in the daytime when they're sleeping, they kind of fold their wings up like this and they, and they sleep how? They sleep upside down, yeah. And then the night time comes and, and their wings open up and they're out there chasing all of those bugs again. They're very busy. That's going to make you very busy people. Now, in order to do this bat song, you need to know that um, the bat goes up, are you up, and down. Up, turn around, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. 
All right, and, and I think the only other, back down, I think the only other part you're gonna need to know, you'll figure out as we go along. This is a song for a very, very busy, busy, busy bat. <laughs> What's he after with his upside down and his downside up? Waiting for the night time, when it's the right time he knows. There he goes, he goes up, he goes down, he goes up, turns around to the left, to the right. Higher and higher, he's down, he's up, he's down. He's a supernatural flyer, no denying he knows where it's at. Look at that acrobat. Dancing in the moonlight, very soon he might be tree top high. Touching the sky, turning and diving. What a ride, what a show. Watch him go, he goes up, he goes down, he goes up, turns around to the left, to the right. Higher and higher, he's down, he's up, he's down. He's a supernatural flyer. No denying, he knows where it's at. Look at that acrobat. Okay, bat wings out, let me see you fly. Nobody flies through the nighttime skies like the acrobat. Nobody flies through the nighttime skies like that. He goes up, down, up, turns around to the left, to the right. Higher and higher, he's down, he's up, he's down. He's a supernatural flyer. Let's go again, ready? He goes up, down, up, turns around to the left, to the right. Higher and higher, he's down, he's up, he's down. He's a supernatural flyer. No denying, he knows where it's at. Look at that acrobat. Oh, look at that acrobat. Mm -hmm, look at that. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. We should put the bat away for right now. I want to do another... Let's do another poem. We did uh, wetland poems before, and I brought, brought this hat with me, a good pirate hat today, and I brought with me a, a book of pirate poems as well. This is a book called When You're a Pirate Dog and Other Pirate Poems. This is written by Eric Odie, that's me. This is illustrated by Jim Harris. We call Jim Harris the illustrator. He did all these amazing, amazing illustrations. And you do nice work. Published by Pelican Publishing. And let's do the very, very first poem of the book. The first poem is called When You're a Pirate Dog. When You're a Pirate Dog. And you can help me with this poem. When I raise my book up in the air, I'd like you to say, When You're a Pirate Dog. You ready? All right. We'll, we'll practice. Here we go. When You're a Pirate Dog. That's good. It didn't sound very pirate-like, did it? Let's try again, a little more pirate-like this time. Here we go. This is a poem called, When You're a Pirate Dog. Arg. Much better. Ready? When you're a pirate dog, arg. They, pirates treat you well, and no one minds your doggy breath or hates your doggy smell. And no one worries if you shed or where you lay your shaggy head, and all the fleas are theirs instead. When you're a pirate dog, arr. You ready? When you're a pirate dog, arr. They pet you when they're able. They never mind their manners as they feed you from the table. And when they sing a pirate song in jo jolly voices loud and strong, you raise your chin and sing along. When you're a pirate dog, arr. Ready? When you're a pirate dog, Arg! Your life is free from troubles. They never put you in a tub with smelly soap and bubbles. 
You spend your days on sea and sand, exploring with your pirate band, and life is sweet and rather grand when you're a pirate dog. Arg! Very nicely done. All right. Well, let's stick with a little, a little um, kind of a jungly theme then. And and I've got my jungle hat with me. And this is a song about my favorite animal in the whole wide jungle. And that would have to be the hippopotamus. And in order to do the hippopotamus song, you need to know that when the hippo goes stomping through the jungle, he goes like this, he goes boom, boom. Practice with me, here we go. Boom, boom, just like that. And when you figure out how to sing this song, I want you to sing it with me. There aren't that many words. Here we go. Stomping through the jungle is the hippopotamus. Boom, boom. Just like that. Stomping through the jungle is the hippopotamus. Boom, boom. With sandpaper skin from top to bottomus. How I love that hippopotamus. Boom, boom. Well, that's not bad, but wait, wait, wait. Where do hippos really like to hang out? In the water, right? Okay, we're gonna send this hippo swimming in the river. When he goes swimming through the river, we go splish splash, like you're dusting cracker crumbs off your hands. Here we go. Oh, swimming through the river is the hippopotamus. Splish splash, boom, boom. Did you get that? Swimming through the river is the hippopotamus. Splish splash, boom, boom. With sandpaper skin from top to bottomus. How I love that hippopotamus. Splish splash, boom, boom, perfect. Now this hippo is getting kind of restless and he is going to go chasing monkeys. When he goes chasing monkeys, we scratch at our sides. We make our best monkey noises. Ready? Chasing all the monkeys is the hippopotamus. Woo, woo, woo. Splish, splash, boom, boom. Chasing all the monkeys is the hippopotamus. Woo, woo, woo. Splish, splash, boom, boom. With sandpaper skin from top to bottomus. How I love that hippopotamus. Woo, woo, woo. Splish, splash, boom, boom, perfect. Now this hippo is hungry and, and he wants to eat mangoes, mangoes, and you get your big hippopotamus mouth out and you say munch, munch. And if you want to do this in American Sign Language, you can put two big hippo teeth up and two big hippo teeth down and you've got the sign for hippopotamus. Isn't that cool? So eating all the mangoes is the hippopotamus. Munch, munch, woo, woo, woo. splish, splash, boom, boom. Eating all the mangoes is the hippopotamus. Munch, munch, woo, woo, woo. splish, splash, boom, boom, my sandpaper skin. From top to bottomus, how I love that hippopotamus. Munch, munch, woo, woo, woo. splish, splash, boom, boom. Okay, I don't know about you, but I think the hippo is sleepy. A sleepy hippo. So what does a sleepy hippo look like? Um, we could put our pillow hands here and we'll snore. Ready? So sleeping in the jungle is the hippopotamus. Munch, munch, woo, woo, woo. splish, splash, boom, boom. Sleeping in the jungle is the hippopotamus. Munch, munch, woo, woo, woo. splish, splash, boom, boom. A sandpaper skin from top to bottomus. How I love that hippopotamus. Munch, munch. Splish, splash, boom, boom. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, my friends, I think we have like maybe enough time to, should we get in one last song? Let's get in one more song. Now, I'll tell you what happened. Here's where the song idea came from. I was driving home one day. You know those signs that tell you what street you're on? And they're usually up pretty high and they might tell you that you're on you're on Chestnut Boulevard or you're on 33rd Street or you're on you're on Woodland Park Way. I was driving home one day and and I, I got to a stop sign and I stopped and I looked up and I was at a street called 
Jump off Joe Road. Jump off Joe Road. I have no idea why it was called Jump Off Joe Road, but I thought that's a pretty cool, crazy name for a street. I wonder if I could do something with that. Jump Off Joe. Maybe I could turn it into a, a song. And then I thought, well, I'm going to change it a little bit from Jump Off Joe to Jump Up Joe. Jump Up Joe. Now you know where the song idea came from. It came from a street sign. Your job, of course, is to listen carefully so you know what to do. And, and look out for yourself. All right, no bumping into furniture or anything crazy like that. Here we go. Well, I've got a friend named Jump Up Joe. I call him on the phone. I say, Joe, what do you know? He says, I know how to jump up. Can you jump up? Up on your feet. Well, I know how to spin around. I know how to jump up. I know how to sit down. Joe's got a sister named Spin Around Sue. I see her on the street. I say, Sue, what do you do? She says, I know how to jump up. Are you back up? Well, I know how to spin around. I know how to jump up. I know how to sit down. Call me Fingers Up Fred. I put my fingers in the air. Did you put your fingers in the air? I put my fingers on my head. I put my fingers on my shoulders. I put my fingers on my knees. I put my fingers on my toes. Now freeze. Um, maybe jump. Jump. I've got a friend named Jump Up Joe. I call him on the phone. I say, Joe, what do you know? He says, I know how to jump up. I know how to spin around. I know how to jump up. I know how to sit down. He says, I know how to jump up. I know how to spin around. And around and around and around and around. I know how to jump up. I know how to sit down. Oh, beautiful. Hey, thank you so much for joining me today, my friends. Again, you've been uh, catching sort of our virtual concert from the city of Edmonds, virtual summer concert series. And once more, uh, provided by the uh, Edmund Arts Commission. And, and special thanks to the Hazel Miller Foundation. And have a wonderful rest of the summer. Again, my name is Eric Odie. Be well.